At 8.15 a.m. on a clear summer morning, the city of Hiroshima was alive with ordinary sounds. The chatter of school children on their way to class, the clatter of bicycles rolling over cobblestones, the soft rumble of trams gliding across the rails. No one looked up at the silver speck cutting across the blue sky. Planes had flown overhead before, and the people had learned not to worry. But inside the belly of that B-29 bomber was something humanity had never unleashed before. Something forged in secret deserts thousands of miles away. Something that had already cost billions of dollars and years of obsession. And something that would forever alter the way the world understood destruction. A polished five-ton machine of steel and uranium rested there, waiting for the moment a single switch would drop it into history. When the bomb bay doors opened, the air was still, almost eerily calm. Below, 350,000 lives carried on with routines that felt unshakable. In less than a minute, those routines would vanish. As the bomb fell silently, spinning end over end, a simple mechanism clicked alive, arming the device. 43 seconds later, without warning, the sky above the city turned into a second sun. For an instant, the temperature at the heart of the explosion soared to over 100 million degrees Celsius, hotter than the core of the sun itself. In that split second, everything within a kilometer of ground zero ceased to exist. Human beings, buildings, trees, vaporized so completely that nothing remained but shadows etched into stone. A fireball a thousand feet wide ripped outward faster than the speed of sound, flattening wooden houses as though they were paper toys. The blast wave crushed concrete, bent steel, and hurled streetcars into the air like toys. Wind screamed through the streets at 600 miles per hour. Survivors would later say, it was like the earth itself exhaled with the fury of a god. But the heat wave was just beginning. The bomb unleashed a searing light brighter than the sun, burning skin black in an instant, fusing clothing into flesh and carving scars that would last lifetimes. Birds ignited mid-flight. Roof tiles bubbled and melted. Within minutes, fires erupted across the city, merging into a storm of flame so intense it created its own wind sucking oxygen from the air until thousands who had survived the blast found themselves suffocating in the inferno. Some leapt into rivers, only to find the water boiling. Others wandered, skin hanging in strips, eyes blind, searching for family that no longer existed. And still, outside the immediate blast zone, the unseen killer crept forward. Radiation, a ghostly poison that would linger for years, invisible but merciless, altering DNA, seeding sickness, and claiming lives long after the firestorms died. What made the bomb so powerful wasn't just its raw energy, but how small it seemed. The uranium inside weighed barely 64 kilograms, no larger than a watermelon, and yet, the chain reaction it triggered tore apart the bonds of matter itself. Einstein had warned that inside every atom lay unimaginable energy, locked away in the heart of nature. Now that energy had been pried open, and in a few seconds, more power was released than all the bombs dropped in six years of World War II combined. The city below, built on centuries of culture and family, was erased in an instant. A crater of silence where life had thrived only minutes before. Survivors would later call it the day the sun fell, because there was no other way to explain what they had seen. And this was only the beginning. Three days later, another bomber lifted off, this time carrying a different design, a sphere of plutonium nicknamed Fat Man. Its target was Nagasaki. Again, families woke to an ordinary morning. Again, children played in the streets. And again, in a flash of light, the world ended. Though the geography of the city spared some neighborhoods, the destruction was still apocalyptic. Valleys funneled shockwaves into concentrated corridors of annihilation. Entire blocks were flattened. Tens of thousands vanished in seconds. In both cities combined, more than 200,000 lives were lost in the first months alone. Many more would perish in the years after. Victims not of flames, but of something silent and insidious. Leukemia, cancers, and genetic damage passed down through generations. For the first time, mankind had built a weapon that did not just kill instantly, but lingered, reshaping life itself. What startled the scientists who built the bomb was how crude their creation had been. The Hiroshima device was primitive by later standards, inefficient even, yet it unleashed destruction on a scale no one had ever imagined. 
In the decades that followed, New Designs multiplied its power a thousandfold. The hydrogen bomb, tested on Pacific atolls, unleashed fireballs five miles wide, producing mushroom clouds that climbed into the stratosphere and shockwaves that circled the entire planet. 